Hey everyone, welcome to our brand new episode of 10 Minute Kick-Ass Coaching, episode number 38, where today we're going to discuss company culture. Is it important? Is it should be part of your business? Is it even more important than strategy, which we talk about all the time? Well, I will say there's a really good challenge for that. Culture is very, very important today. Companies with great culture are built around it. Companies like Google, um, companies like Facebook, companies like Zappos, companies like REI, Adobe. You know, companies are really known for this, Southwest Airlines. I mean, they've been doing it for years. The culture really within their company has been the forefront of what's really working. So culture is part, a big part of a company. Is it more important than the strategy in your business? I'm not totally sure if I can totally that, but I can agree with that, I should say. But what I can say is a company culture can be part of your strategy. So if you're planning a really good strategy as part of your firm or the base of your business, and I'll get into what firm means as an acronym for it with our, our uh, coaching consulting clients I work with and what it comes down to in a certain worksheet I have that I'll uh, disclose it at some time going in the future of how we describe what a firm is and what the base of the business is and how you can integrate these different things into your business. But is it important to have a great company culture? I will say from a retainment standpoint, no question about it. You've got to have a great company culture today. It's very important with the hiring pool that's out there. Um, they want to know things different. They want to know they can be part of something. They want to know they can help build something. Um, some of the old uh, thought and process was that it really didn't matter. You get up, you do your job, you do your job the best you can, you go home, spend time with your family. Well, things have changed. People today, um, the working pool today, entrepreneurs today really want to have a value in what they do. They really want to have stock in what they do. Or the last couple of days, I was meeting with some uh, 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 restoration contractors, say back in Pennsylvania, and also a roofing contractor in uh, around the Philadelphia area. And I could tell you they both unequivocally had some of the same ideas, the same concepts, the same issues, and really some of the same culture. So I thought, you know what, today would be a great, a great way to address what a company culture means, and we could really get into that. Is making it part of your strategy important? Yes. I think if people come to a workplace or somebody builds a business and their company culture, their company values are really built around what is going to make the company go over the top, what's going to make it enjoyable, what's going to make employee retention really good, what's going to make employee attendance really good, um, little benefits to it, not a place of chaos, a place of unorganization. I've seen very, very successful companies operate in chaos. I can't say I agree with that, and they have tremendous turnover to show it. Even some of the good companies, some of the ones that have really done a lot of things right, they unfortunately do a lot of things, in my opinion, wrong. And one of the big things is that culture problem. Culture can be a culture of chaos, a culture of organization, chaos management, as they call it. Chaos because nobody knows what's going on. Nobody wants to answer the question because they're too worried what the boss is going to say or what your supervisor is going to say or the leader is going to say. Well... You can't really build a business long term with that, in my opinion. You've got to have a great, strong company culture when people come into work every day that they want to make a difference. What they do matters. There's no question about that. Um, I have something to say called culture defines, defines, I'm sorry, development. Culture defines development, which is stands for CDD. So if you have a great culture, it's great for development, it's great for growth, it's great for sales, it's great for marketing, it's great for morale more than anything, but that morale keeps people around and wants them to, and, and, and again, with the type of uh, work pool that's out there today, with the type of staff, the type of technicians, the type of people that want a career, they want a career that matters. There's, that's just part of things going future, and you have to understand that in part, as part of your business, that that company culture that you build, you implemented, is something that's going to make or break your business. A lot of success stories with this. And as we keep going on, uh, we keep seeing more of it. A few years ago, I learned about an entrepreneur, and, and many of you probably know who he is. His name is Tony Shea. He started and built with some partners from college a company called Zappos. And Zappos is acquired by Amazon, which is another company known for the great customer service. And uh, they found they had like values to it. Their customer service at Zappos was second to none. is really kind of award-winning. And um, he listened to I Saw Tony talk. And, uh, and really, he just, he, he had a great concept. I really adapted. Now a lot of other companies have really come on board, especially the tech companies. Um, social media companies have come on board with this. 
that um, if you build a great company culture, people stay. And he actually tries to get people, when they first come in, to walk away from it. Offering them money, offering them whatever, to say, you can come into our facility in Las Vegas, interview. We like you, but we're still going to try and get you to crack, essentially, and leave the company. And we know if you take the bait and do that, you're probably in the right fit the company, right fit for the company. So um, that's something to really, really consider when you're when you're looking at a a, 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 a business or a job or a career change or even your own business. We're going to stick to most of that um, when it comes to the rest of our uh, the talk here tonight. And company culture. So if you have a system in your business, and I consider culture part of a system or part of a strategy and a process. It's something that's ongoing and should be uh, implemented every single day. It's something that should just happen every single day. There's, there's just that. That's it. There's no other way to say it. Um, that's what you have to implement. And and you're going in, and the, and the culture is such that uh, they come in and they feel like they've got some good tasks that they can make a difference with. That the people around them are all kind of, you know, not always everybody's going to be the, the perfect person. Not everybody's always going to be, you know, ecstatic to be there. But generally, people come in, they want to do their work, they want to stay, um, they make it very valuable. Uh, another example of that is Google. Google, when you work for them, really wants to keep you, for the most part, there at their facility as much as possible. They want you to work without question as much as you can feel comfortable with. They offer uh, phenomenal world-class fitness centers, chefs, restaurants. They do your dry cleaning. They've even got a place for you to stay if you need to, if you're working on a project or working late, because they want you to be as comfortable as they can because they realize at the end of the day, if you're happy being here, if you're happy working for the company, if you're happy with the goals, that they will get a better person, that they won't have to go and hire another person. When you're a big tech company like Google and the size they are, it's very expensive and very difficult. Now, there's certainly though there's a lot of people on this planet that are really, really gifted, but you have to be at the top of your game to work for Google. If you've worked for Google before or afterwards, you pretty much your resume is completely written. So your work ethic is there, what you bring is there. They find that you are right fit for that company, that you can help them grow both personally and professionally within the organization. So they will do everything they can to give you everything you can possibly do so you're always consumed with the work at hand as much as possible. Still having a decent work-life balance, but they know that if you go home and you want to work on something, that you're still getting something done. And if a big project is coming up or they have a big launch in one of their divisions or one of the parts of Google, that you're going to go home and think about this because you're all on board, because you know the company you're working with and for has your back, is trying to do everything they can on your end, and expecting that you're going to do your same on your side of it. So that's a great example to me of company culture. Um, Southwest is another one. They've really managed everything. People that work for Southwest really enjoyed it, stayed with them long term, opposed to other companies. I mean, there's just a bunch of them. We talked about Zappos. We talked about REI. We talked about Adobe. REI is an outfitter. Adobe as a developer, software developer. I mean, people that work there tend to stay there and really make a big difference in the company. So culture is massively important. People don't want to come into a situation where it's just chaos and they don't know what's going on. They don't know what's going on that day. They walk in and go, what am I, uh, what am I doing for a day? And nobody seems to know. Nobody. They know in advance what kind of difference they can make. So when you're hiring the right people, the right culture means everything. I talked yesterday about the Train the Trainer program. I mean, I had the right culture when I went into that training program. And that stayed with me for years, stays with me to this day. It was just a technician training program, just simple. But the fact that the company thought enough to send me away to learn something that benefited me and them, I now knew more about the products, I knew more, more about how to present it, I knew more about how to sell the product correctly, I knew how to position and market the product correctly, and I also knew the technical aspects that I could sell if I had a particular client that needed to know what the technical aspects. That person was more analytical than amiable. If the person's analytical, they're going to want to know exactly what this does or what that does. An amiable person just says, hey, I like the guy, he seems decent, he seems like a nice enough guy, and I want to buy from him. Great, but that's the easy ones. That's not always the situation. So I had to learn the difference between an amiable person and an analytical person and how to talk to them and how to uh, really 
give them the advice or give them the products that they were really asking for, silently asking for most of the time, and then you're able to position it, and people were very happy with it. So an a, a, a analytical and amiable situation is something you need to understand. And if you have a great company culture and a great training program, like we talked about yesterday, and different things in place, and the culture is such that you really, really enjoy what you're doing, you really get up and go, wow, that today I know I want to do this, this, and this, and your tasks are there, and you're just happy to do it, then you're going to be a great person. And it starts with the very top of a company. If you're a corporate giant and it's working its way um, down to whoever it is, if that person at the top believes something, then the middle person believes something, and it goes farther down and down and down. If the, if the core person at the bottom is actually enthused to come to work, you have a great company culture. Again, not dumb enough or naive enough to believe that somebody is actually going to uh, do all that correctly. But in the grand scheme of things, having a great company culture is where it's at, man. So that's it for today for 10-Minute Kick-Ass Coaching. I really appreciate you being here. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below, and I appreciate your time. Have a great one. Bye.